Welcome to Fathers and Daughters, a podcast where we discuss important topics and current issues from a biblical perspective that are relative to fathers and daughters. Please subscribe and email us at fdpodcast at yahoo.com with questions or episode topic suggestions. All right, you ready? I am ready, but you're yawning. Quit it. I'll probably yawn the whole episode. So it's not that early. No, it's not. I just was up super late last night. So So we're both home from work because today is Veterans Day. Yep. So thank you to all the veterans out there who have fought for our country and for the rights that we have. Uh, We appreciate you. Very much. And we decided to just sit and record today. This will probably come out next week or within the next couple of days. We're usually two weeks ahead, uh-huh. but going on our trip kind of messed, messed us up. up a little bit. So right now we're trying to play catch up. So we are recording this week's episode. Cool. So how are you? Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. We both have work trips coming up. Yeah. I'm kind of excited about that. Are you that. excited to travel for work? Yeah, I'm really excited. We're going to a conference in Florida that I'm kind of pumped about. It's weird. I, I feel like we just got back from Florida and I'm flying back to Florida. <laughs> uh, but we went to Orlando. I'm going to Tampa. So. Really cool. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I don't really want to see Tampa. I'm like, eh, whatever. I would rather go somewhere else in the country, but that's what the conference is. Um, but the conference location changes every year. So last year it was in St. Louis. This year it's in Tampa, so hopefully next year it'll be somewhere different. Yeah, I travel a lot for work, so I'm not that excited. To me, it's just another, you know, another work trip. Yeah. And um, I need to be back on Thursday by seven because mom and I have a movie to go see. So my flight lands at five twenty-five. So hopefully there won't be any delays, and I can be back here to go see our movie. What are you seeing? So I'm seeing this uh, documentary on the Pesh Mode. Is showing at different theaters throughout the United States just that one night. And it's a documentary about their last tour, but they're mixing in fans' stories. And I don't know, they're just following the life of different fans throughout the documentary. Oh, that's cool. So since they're one of my favorite bands, it's something that we must go and do. Cool. So you celebrated your birthday this last week? I did. I turned Happy 22. Happy 22nd. Thank you. So I know it wasn't as exciting as the 21st. Oh, no. It was, I don't know. <laughs> Everyone keeps asking me, they're like, how does it feel to be 22? I'm like, exactly how it felt when I was 21. 22 is just not a milestone. I'm really freaking, I'm so sick and tired of people singing that dumb Taylor Swift song. <clears throat> So that's super, oh man, I hate that song. I was like, it was great that one day, and now please don't sing that song again. So yeah, I turned 22, and it feels good. You know what's crazy? The mom was your age when she had you. I know. I feel like you're disappointed about that. (laughs) Why? Because you want me to have kids. Well, yeah, I want grandkids, but you know, I'm not going to force you to go have kids. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. I don't know. I just think it's weird that time flies and um, mom was your age when she had you. Was, I, I can't believe that we were married. Mom at, was at married your age. and was yeah. pregnant at the age I am currently. That's nuts. It was also a different time. And I think that's important for this episode because we're going to talk about dating. We are going to talk about dating. That's right? a good segue. Yeah. But, well, but before we go there, another good thing that happened this week is that... We submitted our application for review to Apple so they can review our podcast and they can uh, feature it in their podcast store. Yep. Which is pretty cool. I mean, even though our goal is not to be famous podcasters, I've said before that my goal is just to record our relationship just for our future generations and hopefully we can help someone out there, you know, with their relationship with their kids preferably a father and daughter but you know a lot of what we say and what we have done and in, in our experiences can help anybody you know um but or, should apple decide that we are legit and want to feature us and send us send us some free iphones and ipads that'd be legit too that would be legit but that's not the purpose the purpose no, is so the they purpose. can make our podcast available and accessible yep 
As of now, we've had about 240 downloads throughout the country, I think through 20 states in the United States. So for those of you who are listening, thanks for listening. Please send us an email and tell us where you're at. Um, fdpodcast at yahoo.com we would love to know where you're listening from where you found us yeah where you found us how we, you found us we'd love to know what all of that kind of stuff is so just an email and just uh, let us know or questions if you have questions we'll answer the questions during our episodes yeah we'd love to have just a Q&A episode so send us some questions about that kind of stuff that'll be fun our episode is also on YouTube so we have a YouTube channel and I've noticed that there's a couple subscribers that I don't know so it's kind of neat, you know, that we're able to reach people that we don't have a personal relationship with, but listen to us out there. And we would like to hear from you too. Just send us an email and just let us know how you found us. Yeah, what a fun way to meet people. Mm-hmm, for sure. Okay. First shout out to uh, Lou and... Oh, Ash. Who listening said from they Pittsburgh. listen from Pittsburgh. Love you guys. So keep listening. Um, They've been our friends for a long time. Yeah. We're going to be traveling to Colorado at the beginning of December to visit family. So um, I think it'd be cool if we recorded from Colorado and maybe did a few segments with some family members. I think that'd be really fun. So shout out to the Barton gang who uh, listen out there from Colorado. We love you guys. Hopefully you get to be a part of this podcast when we get out there. That would be fun. Also, remember during our last podcast, we mentioned our new friend that we met at Walt Disney World. Oh, Fighting Florida. On the Jungle Cruise ride. Yeah. Yeah. So... Her Instagram handle is finding underscore Florida 912. So just go give her a follow. She mentioned us on her page and on her story. So so it's kind of cool that we're able to meet friends and share what, what we like to do. So let's talk about dating, yeah? Yeah. What are we going to talk about? I'm excited to talk about dating today. Really? Yeah. I love, I love talking about dating because I feel like I have such a different view than a lot of people do. Uh-huh. So I like talking about it. Okay. You, you picked this topic, so you must have an idea of what you want to talk about. I do. I wanted to talk about a few things, and then I wanted to talk about what the Bible says about dating. And then I have a game for us at the end. Okay. So are you ready? Yeah. Tell us about how you and mom dated. Okay. So here's the story. Uh, where do I start? Let's see. So no one really taught me about dating. Uh, that was not something that I talked about uh, with my parents. So what I learned about dating, I just learned it from, you know, just watching TV and friends and quote unquote, the world. In high school, I started dating this girl that I had been pursuing since middle school. And we dated for a few years. Then she got a scholarship to come and play softball at CBU. After graduation, I spent a year in community college in the Chula Vista area. And after my first year, I decided to come and follow her. So that's when I applied to CBU. I got accepted and then I came up. You know, it, it was kind of cool because it felt it felt like an awesome thing that we were young. We were away from home. We were going to school and we were together. And we thought we, thought we were going to live happily ever after. But because no one taught me how to date... No one taught me how to value women, how to be a respectful man, how to, you know, be committed. I was stupid and I started just flirting with other girls and I started looking at other options and I didn't take care of that relationship. I ended up um, cheating on her and we broke up and that was rough because I thought that was my future, you know, so I had to learn to move on. That was a crazy period for me because um, I went through a period of depression, a period of loneliness. I felt like I was up here by myself, and the reason why I came up here was no longer there. It took me a while to get to a point where I was okay letting that relationship go. I realized that that relationship was not going to be restored. In hindsight, that was probably one of the best things that could have happened to me because um, I think that if we would have continued and if we would have gotten married, it wouldn't have lasted more than a year or two. Even though we were going to a Christian college, we didn't really know what we believed. And I learned throughout the years that a marriage without Christ is really hard to maintain. Anyways, 
at the time I was an RA and as an RA, we were responsible to help the new class, the new students coming in. Uh, we were responsible to help them move into their dorms. So the day that the new students came in, we were out there helping them move their stuff. Apparently, that's when I first saw mom. I don't remember seeing her because I just helped so many students. But she remembers me moving her furniture into her dorm. So several months later, when I was trying to find a new relationship, I saw mom one day at the cafeteria and she just caught my attention because she just looked different than all the other girls I had been interested in. Her hair was curly. Her face was all done up. Like, you know, like you could tell, like she took care of herself. And to me, that was interesting. And we had several friends in common. And I started, you know, I started doing my research to see how I would be able to connect with her. And I decided to write her a note. And to this date, we call that note the stalker's note. Because on the note, it said, I don't think you know who I am, but I know who you are. I have been watching you lately because I like you, and I think you're cute. I would like to know you better, so you'll hear from me soon. And I just signed it with an R. Now, our college was very small, so there wasn't many guys with names that started with R. And because we have common friends, she quickly figured out who I was. In a regular situation, that would be kind of creepy, right? But at the time, I didn't think about that, and... She didn't see it that way, so that's good. And she, I think she knew who I was because I've been kind of creeping on her and she had noticed me staring. And either that night or the following night, we ended up meeting and decided that we were going to go out and get to know each other. And after that, we just connected and we just started doing stuff. And our, our relationship really moved along quickly. I make fun of her because after talking to me for a couple of days, she was the first one who kind of reached out and grabbed my hand. And then I was like, well, I guess we're holding hands now. So, you know, to me, it was just something new and something fun and, um, and exciting. But still, I did not know how to properly date and respect and take care of our relationship. We ended up breaking up and making up several times just because um, I was an idiot and I did many stupid things. And and looking back now, I know that God wanted us together and that's why we lasted because I did a lot of stupid stuff. You know, even after we got married, I did a lot of stupid stuff. Eventually, after two and a half years, we got married and, and here we are. But I wish I knew then what I know now about dating and I could go back and tell myself when I was 18 what dating is supposed to be like and how much um, heartache and pain and stupid decisions men can avoid if we date properly the way God intended it so so that's my dating story any questions no no (laughs) was was that enough yeah that was plenty yeah that's what I wanted. That's our I dating, our dating time was fun because we grew up in different socioeconomic places. It's a really good way of putting that. We were very different, so it was fun getting to know about each other. You for sure dated the like rich OC girl. I did. Oh yeah, and I'm sure you definitely reaped the benefits of that. I I did. I she mean, buy but... clothes. She buy gas. Oh yeah, yeah. All yeah. those things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And sorry, Nan and Pop. I think they know, you know. They're not stupid. Of course I mean, they she, knew. She had the she had the new car. She had the credit card. She had. He probably um, looked at his credit card statement and be like, Amanda, why did you buy two full tanks of gas in the time it's been for three days? You know, I, I was a poor Mexican kid and she used to buy me gas and clothes and stuff like that. I did a lot of firsts with mom. Um, you know, not just the. Not the just, dating Not firsts. just the dating first, but I, I experienced eating different things with her that I had never experienced just because she had been exposed to different things than I had growing up. 
Mom told me that the first time you ever had an artichoke was with her and in college. Yeah. I think that's I, crazy. I had no idea artichokes existed. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is this? You know, and I wanted to eat the whole leaf or whatever. The core. The, whatever you call oh, oh, it. Oh, the leaf. Yeah. The, and, the, and, yeah. you know, you just kind of peel the inside. You peel it off with your teeth. And I had no idea. So, so that was interesting. Um, the first time I ever wore sandals, it was because mom bought me sandals. Um, yeah, just th- there's a lot of stuff like that. Did Nana Pop buy you a Disney pass? Yeah, I think we talked about that during the last episode that we did a lot of our dating at Disneyland. And mm-hmm. that's why Disneyland is a big part of our lives because it just takes me back to those times. You know, and then when you guys were born, we took you there. So back then, Disney passes were not that expensive. And Nana Pop bought me my first Disney pass. So it was a great way for them to contribute to our dating Mm. to our dating time you know and and they did that a couple years uh even when we were married or when you guys were growing up just because it was a fun thing to do they had passes and then the bartons had passes too so we all spent days at disneyland together um, before it was crazy crowded and passes were so expensive so there you go what advice would you give to kids dating (laughs) now I should have anticipated this question. Because I feel like dating is so much different nowadays than it was in the 90s. Um, Just because we have the use of cell phones. We have social media. Like there's so much that goes into dating nowadays that it's so different than when I'm sure you were dating. So a common question would be what advice would you give young Ricardo when he was dating? But the truth is, is that it's not the 90s anymore. And so that's kind of an irrelevant question. So I want to know yeah. what advice you'd give to kids dating now. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. Dating is so much different now. Like I, I can't even imagine dating right now. There's so many distractions and ways to um, just kind of get sidetracked. You know, like all, all the dating apps and and everything that's available on the internet. I say that if the internet was so accessible when I was young, I probably would have never met mom because I would have stayed in my college room looking at porn all day. You know, I probably wouldn't have done good in school because my mind was so distorted when it came to all that stuff that I would have been distracted by all of that. So I I just feel so bad for young people growing up today because they have to deal with all that crap. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's very hard to keep things pure the way that um, God wants them to be. So if I was to go back and give myself advice, I would definitely tell myself to, oh, I don't know, I, I would have had to start from the basics, you know, just teaching myself and mentoring myself and uh, who I was in Christ, what Christ intended for me for my life. And through that, teach myself to to respect women and love women the way God loves the church. Um, I would teach myself that the purpose for dating is not just to get someone in bed and have fun, but the purpose for dating is to find your companion for life, to build a life together that's going to be honoring to to God. You know, and, and that's what I know now, but... Even if someone would have told me then, I, I don't I don't know if I would have listened. Mm-hmm. You know, we've said before that, that young kids are not, their brains are not fully developed yet. And I, I don't know if I would have listened. So I, don't know, I guess a lot of us just have to learn by crushing and burning and getting back up again. What about you? Interesting. What about me? What? I don't know. What, what advice would you give young girls now about dating? Well, as a preface, I don't believe in casual dating. I think it's a waste of time and I think it's a distraction from your relationship with God. And when I say casual dating, I mean dating without the intent of looking for your spouse. I watch a TV show. It's called New Girl. And it's about these four guys and a girl who all live in a loft together. And they just do life and they go through adult things and jobs and uh, relationships. And it's just about them like living life at the age of like late 20s, early 30s. And one of the guys and the girl in the loft started dating and they dated for like a year and a half and then they broke up and it was a really just civil breakup. Um, They just kind of agreed that like they just don't want the same things. She had mentioned marriage and he freaked out and kids and he freaked out and he's like, I just don't know if I'm ready for that kind of thing yet. And they broke up because they had just said that they just didn't want the same things. And it was really civil. Uh, And I think it's kind of one of the only times in 
watching TV shows that I've seen it done being like, oh, wow, like it wasn't this crazy, messy, nasty, like I hate you Mm -hmm. breakup, but they showed grief like they, they were they were very sad. But they eventually came together and just said, let's be friends. And we just don't want the same things that we do. And later on in that same episode, uh, one of the other guys in the loft broke up with his his girlfriend. And uh, the girl in the loft asked him about dating. And um, and he had told her that, um, oh, gosh, what was the quote? Oh, she asked him, said, why are you dating? And he And he told her, he said, the reason for dating is just to keep on dating. And she said, no, like, that's not the point of dating. The, the point of dating is to, like, get married and, and find your soulmate. Um, I don't really believe in soulmates. But, like, you know, it's to find your, it's to find your person, I guess she was, she was trying to say. And, um, and he said, like, no, the reason for dating is just to keep on dating. So if that gives you any picture as to, like, how I feel about dating, that's kind of it. Like, I don't believe the purpose for dating is to just keep on dating. It's not to find companionship. It's not just to find people who you relate to well to just keep doing life with. Um, those are called roommates. <laughs> those are called friends. Right, right. That's what that is. Like you can find companionship in friends. You know what I mean? So so I, I just don't believe in, in casual dating. And so my my question for for young girls would be, what are you looking for? Are you looking to casually date someone? Are you looking for companionship? Um, are you looking for friendship? Are you looking to fill a void that's there? I think a lot of the times we just date for dating because that person's attractive. We don't think about the inner psychological things that are happening inside of you. Like, what are you trying to do? There were a lot of girls in my high school that dated because they had to fill a void in life. It's, it's very common to see young girls dating. And I, I used to notice that when you were like in the high school age range, and it was very easy to say, oh, this girl has daddy issues, you know, just because of the way they behaved in public with the boyfriend, quote unquote, and how they share their dating experience on social media and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That quote, daddy issues. I hate saying that. I hate saying daddy issues. Why? Because, especially in the context of dating, I think daddy issues are a real thing and that a lot of young women have um, problems with their dad and the world tells you that the the way to solve daddy issues is to find a good man. Find a good man who's going to make up for those daddy issues. And I'm like, that that guy's never going to fill the place of your father. Right. But maybe that girl is... Is like that because of daddy issues. Is because of daddy issues. And so my advice would say that if you are struggling with identity issues because of something that happened between you and your father at a young age, or even now, that relationship is not going to be fixed by you dating a new guy. It's going to be fixed by you fixing your relationship with God. That's how daddy issues are fixed is because he's the father end all be all. Right. That the person who might have messed you up as a kid is only your earthly father yeah. or your earthly stepfather or your earthly uncle, whoever he is that gave you, quote, daddy issues, that relationship's only going to be solved by God. So, so I mean, that's just kind of how I want to underlay my opinions on dating. Um, the void thing is real. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, girls miss, I think, growing up with a father that is not present or that is not intentional and that is not loving. And that person is going to look to fill that void. But you're right. That void should be filled by getting to know God as your heavenly father, not the horny boy, you know, telling you things that give you butterflies inside. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, exactly. That That's my underlying opinion on dating. Just know your why before you go into it. And that's what I tell my youth girls all the time before they start dating. I'm like, why? Why? Why are you dating? Because most of young men, all they want to do is get in your pants. Yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you this, one of the biggest questions we've gotten is what age should I let my kids start dating? That was the mm-hmm. biggest thing. And, and I want to tell dads, if your daughter has the right opinion about dating and she can give you the correct why, I think that is the time to allow her to start dating. Mm-hmm. If you ask her and she gives you the wrong answer, then it's probably not time. Oh, because he's cute. Cool. Not the right answer. Uh, because he makes me feel good. Not the right answer. Because he's a good companion. Not the right answer. Because he's a good partner. Not the right answer. If she comes to you and says, Dad, I want to start dating because I think this man has the potential to be my future husband. Cool. Let him meet the family, man. Yeah. Start that process. She could be 16. Your best friends got married when they were 18. They met each other when they were 17. 
I do believe in young love. I think God can begin to plant that relationship at whatever age he deems yeah. correct. Um, so I think it's wrong to limit that number at an age, but just know that that person needs to have the correct mindset going into it. Yeah, because there's also no right age to get married. It's just when you're ready. Like our friends Jessica and Paul, the doctors. Yeah. They got married when they were 18. You know, if you think about it, that's a pretty young age, but they were ready. Yeah. And, and they have a great marriage and a great relationship. You know, I'm sure they've had struggles just like every other married couple, but they were ready and they knew what marriage was and they just wanted to be together and uh, and they're still going strong. Yeah. So as we continue to go into to dating, um, uh -huh. that's the answer to the big question that I think we all get is when is the right time to start dating? Mm -hmm. um, I think the second biggest question, at least that I've gotten, is um, how do you start that process of dating? And in my opinion, and this is just, this might be a very unpopular opinion, but that's okay. I think the beginning of that dating process should start with meeting the family. Well, yeah. If, if the guy has an issue meeting the family, then that's a red flag right there. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest red flag you could get um, other than the not loving Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I'm like, I think it would be great to go on one, two, three dates And then say, all right, like we did the getting to know each other part. We did the we're seeing each other part. Let's meet the family and actually start the dating process. It depends how old you are. If you're 16, then there's no first three dates by yourselves. No, it's like come and meet the family. You go out on a few outings as a family. And then if I can trust this kid, then I might let you take out my daughter on a date. Yeah. But if you're 18, 19, maybe 20, yeah, you can probably go out on a couple dates and then come meet the family. And it all depends on where the mind is of the girl because you have some 20-year-olds that are stupid too. And ladies, let me tell you, especially ladies who have good dads, like one of my best friends, Ashley, she is an amazing dad. I mean, Rob is, uh, we, we've talked about him at the podcast before. He used to be my old softball coach. And one of the, one of the past conversations that her, her and I had is that we have a really hard time dating. I personally have a really hard time dating because we have such high standards. We were raised in a way where we had an amazing man ro role model in our lives to show what a godly husband should be, that now it's hard to find someone who's going to live up to what we expect. And she agrees. She feels the same way. She's like, I have a really hard time dating because I compare everyone to, to my dad and saying, is this man going to treat me the way that this guy treats my mom? Is this guy going to to love me the way that he loves God? And so it, it's just, it, we just have a really tough time finding that person. We're both in a place of life right now where we're ready to, to settle down and, and start looking for a husband. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I'm 22. Yeah, that's young. I've just had a lot of life experience already. And and for me, I'm like, I'm ready to, to meet someone, date for six to eight months and get engaged like that's just where I'm at I don't want to sit around and play the dating game and the waiting game of like where are we at where are we gonna do like I have a job I have a car I have I have all these things that I'm like okay I'm kind of ready to take a next step in my life and if I start dating that's the direction I want to go in but it's going to be something that I'm sure a lot of men find intimidating yeah especially guys your age because most guys your age have no idea of what they're doing and are afraid of commitment and are just not where you you're at yeah I think that's why I've always liked older guys and when I say older guys I mean like only four years ish older than me yeah not older older guys but but in high school that was such an unpopular opinion um I was always found to be very intimidating none of the boys ever really liked me in high school because I, I think the opinion I had because you were not easy was similar to what I had now and I wasn't easy and I had very high standards for myself and for my marriage and I'm like, I'm not looking to get married and have to sign a prenup or have to sign, you know, something to where divorce could be in the future, you know, like I want to get married and settle down and that be it. Yeah. And, and I'm sure very few of your friends that you had in high school who were in the dating scene are now happily married to the same guy, right? Yeah. Let's talk about what the Bible says about dating. Okay. Let's do that. Is that okay? Yeah. So in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, this isn't even specifically about dating or marriage. Um, it just says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. 
I think this is just a testament to whoever you put in your life. Bad company ruins good morals. If you put people in your life who are going to lead you down a path of destruction, you're probably going to end up falling down the path of destruction. So just be careful who you put around you in your life. Be careful who you invite into the intimate parts of your life. That doesn't mean don't invite people in, but be careful who you give these things to. This is one of those topics where the Bible is not 100% clear or doesn't address dating directly. There's nowhere in the Bible that says dating should be like this, and this is what you should do to yeah. date properly. But if you're smart enough, you're going to look at the different areas in the Bible that talk about relationships, that talk about marriage, that talk about love, and you're going to put those together and really make a blueprint of what dating should be yeah. like. Something else that we haven't, we didn't really get into, and I don't, I don't think we need to get into it that much. But in First Corinthians six eighteen, it kind of talks about um, like sexual immorality, and it says, "Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexual immorality person sins against its own body." So let me start with this. Something that my old youth leader used to say. Um, shout out to Sarah Legaspi. She's one of the best youth leaders. She is the best youth leader I've ever had. Whoop, whoop. She used to tell me, and I remember asking her one day, like, when is it okay to start dating? Um, and she told me, she goes, you need to know your no. So I'll say it again. You need to know your no. So you need to know K N, and then you need to know your no and O. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to know when you, when, when is the time to say no to someone else who's needing to touch your body or do things to you, you need to know when to say no because that's when the line needs to be drawn. And I, that always stuck with me. Whenever I've been in a relationship with anyone, it's always, I need to know what my no is. And if you know when your no is, you can start dating. I remember sitting in youth group one night and she told one of the girls in my group, you don't know your no. You don't need to be dating. And I was like, whoa. Huh, interesting. Yeah. And, and, and it's the truth. Like if you don't know when to say no, you probably shouldn't be dating someone. Yeah. So that always stuck with me. So I'll just kind of leave that there. And I'll leave that there. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. As parents, we tried to do as much as we could to raise you right. But it took a lot of people to raise you to be who you are today. And one of those, one of those important persons in your life um, was Sarah. And I know because you you look up to her a lot and you've shared with us how much you've learned from her. So, so thank you. Yeah. She's amazing. She taught me a lot of really good things. That was one of the things that really stuck with me. What I think is really cool is that now you are her daughter's, um, youth leader, youth leader. Yeah. So it's cool to watch Sarah care for me and then for me to be able to care for Sarah's daughter. So that's been such a blessing and such a journey. Yeah. Going, going back to that verse that you were sharing about, uh, sexual immorality. Uh, I, I, I think that's something that needs to be taught from an early age. That's something that needs to be um, a lifestyle that has to be shared and lived with your child because that's not something that you bring up when that individual is in its late teens and now you want to change uh, the way they see life. Like I was saying earlier, if I could go back and tell myself that, mm. I wouldn't have listened because that is not something that was taught to me from an early age. I did not have a father who taught me that. I did not have a fatherly figure or a mentor who sat me down from an early age and told me, God expects this from you. Mm. And you need to keep yourself pure as much as you can. And you need to fight to make this possible until you get married. No one told me that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's not something that you bring in in your teens. That's something that has to start early in life. I try to get in mom's pants. I don't doubt that. But she fought, man. And I think that's what made it fun. Just that challenge. Yikes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, so I had to wait till our wedding night. Good. She did the right thing. Yeah. It was frustrating. I'm sure. But yeah. I'll kind of end it with this. There's a very famous verse in Proverbs. Um, and it says, it's Proverbs 31, 30, and it says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And so this is just for young women out there and dads, please just back me up and um, be encouraging in this is that young women, the Bible isn't made to teach you how to specifically just be a good wife. That's not all the Bible is. The whole Bible is not all of these books about how to be a good wife. The Bible is created on how to teach you how to be a good follower of the Lord. And so as you as you continue to to go about your life, I always believed in this lie 
that I need to learn how to be a good wife. And that's it. And I'd put that above learning how to be a good servant of Lord. And that got me into a lot of nasty places because I was always let down. I was always just angered by myself because I believe that the Bible was only teaching me how to be a good wife. Before you're a wife, you're a daughter of God. And so know that going into life that your life goal is not to be someone's wife. Your life goal is to praise and honor the Lord and Mm -hmm. to bring glory to him. And so know that and, and do that before. And this is something I'm still working on today is that in, in doing all those things, God will teach you how to be a good wife. That's why messages like that are in the Bible, because he wants us to know that we're his daughters before we're someone else's wife. And when you get married, you're still his daughter. And to know that going in and to know that as you continue to, to, to date guys and to go to school and to make friendships, that before you're someone's wife, you're God's daughter. And if you continue to live your life in pursuit of, of God's vision for your life, you're going to be a better wife mm-hmm. in the end. Yeah. Well, and that applies to dating too. Before you're a girlfriend, you are a daughter of God. Mm-hmm. And before the guy wants to run the different bases, remember that you're a daughter of, of God. Yeah. I think one of the most important verses in the Bible when it comes to dating and marriage is 2 Corinthians 6, 14, that says to not be unequally yoked. Mm. And a lot of people just oversee that. And they grow up believing something. You know, they go to church, they, they're excited about the Lord, they get baptized, they give their life to Christ. And as soon as they meet that girl or that guy, all that goes out the window. And when that other person does not have the same values and beliefs that you do, it can mess up your life. Mm-hmm. You know, so when when you're looking for that other individual, when you're looking for that partner, make sure that you're looking for that person that has the same beliefs that you do, because that's going to save you a lot yeah. of a lot of heartache. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. that's all I have. So yeah, that's all I have. You know what? Hold on. What I forgot to. Tell the dad something. Oh, yeah. You like, did. like, don't be wussies. Don't be afraid to get in the middle of your daughter's quote unquote relationship if you know that the guy is not the good guy for her. Preach. She may not like you for a while, but who cares? This can affect her whole life. And if you have young daughters, start now. Start teaching them the value that the Start teaching them about the value that they have. Start teaching them how to respect themselves and what is important because later on, then you won't have to worry so much about it because they're going to have these high expectations and uh, and they're not just going to put up with some stupid horny kid who just wants to play with your daughter's body. So Ooh, I got something to say to these dads. You ready? Yeah. I'm ready. I'm heated. I'm good. Dads, if you're out there... Please do us young women a favor. Start acting like the man you want her to marry. Oh, that's deep. Show her what a good husband should be because I know that you did and it saved me a lot of baggage. Well, we went on dates, remember? We Yeah. That was a one of our things to do we went on dates a lot and there were times when I bought you flowers and I opened your door and I wanted to teach you what you should expect. Every year you took me to the Nutcracker and on Christmas or uh, on during Christmas season and we get all we'd get all dressed up and mm-hmm. you'd go and take me to dinner and then we would go and see the show. But dad, start acting like the man you want your daughter to marry because she might end up actually marrying that guy. Yeah. And Amen. if you if you act like wh- whoever you act like, that's probably going to be the standard she's going to have for herself going into marriage. Yeah. So if you're acting like a dirt bag and you're treating your wife like crap, that's probably what she's going to think is the normal. And that might end up, yeah. that might be what she ends up settling with. And you see that pattern a lot. Oh, yeah. You see that pattern all the time. There's that the saying that you marry your, you marry a man who's just like your father. Mm-hmm. I hope that's the case for me. I hope I end up marrying someone who has the same standards and the same morals and the same fear of God that you do. Oh, you're going to make me cry. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> but dads, start, da- start acting like the man you want your daughter to marry because she might end up actually marrying that guy. Yeah. And if you take a look at yourself and think... What I, and I want you to think about this is, am I acting like the type of guy I want my daughter to marry? And if you can't answer that question, yes, then something needs to change. Yeah. I, because we're young and we're stupid and we're looking for someone to follow and we're looking for someone to set an example for us. 
And the reason that I don't have as much baggage as I probably could have is because I had a great example set for me. Amen. I think that phrase has now been copywritten by us. <laughs> Start acting like the man you want your daughter to marry. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to end. All right. What's the game? I do too. Okay. Um, so I looked up some unique first date questions. Okay. That I'm going to ask you. Okay. Some of these are a little like 2019 for sure, but I'll keep it a little bit more simple. If you could be in any work profession, what would it be? Like you could pick anything in the world to do. What would you want to do? I would probably like to be a dolphin trainer. That's so weird, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. You okay. did not know that, huh? No, I, I didn't. Know. I'm really. I don't. I don't really know if I want to know why, but okay. A um, couple years ago, we got the opportunity to swim with dolphins, and I just think dolphins are some of the most interesting animals in the world okay. because they're so smart and they're so. Um, they make fun noises and they're so slippery and I don't know. This just got so weird. I'm yeah. moving on to the next question. Okay. <laughs> um, are you or, a or 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 I would okay. like to be a guide at Disneyland, like a tour guide? Oh yeah, my gosh, like I've always guide. wanted to do that too. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know so much about Disney and Disneyland, and there's so much more to learn that I would love to be one of those you know guides with the flag like it to take it, celebrities it, around everywhere no i don't want to babysit celebrities i'd love to ride i i want to guide a group of people who want to learn the 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 facts and the like the history of disney just to learn the history and the in the yeah oh yeah no not me i want to be one of the ones that like walks around like you can you can purchase like a person to walk around with you yeah to like help direct you or whatever and help you get to the front of all the lines. I'm like, I want to ride Splash Mountain with Beyonce and Jay-Z. Yeah. Like that sounds like fun, but whatever. I, I don't want to okay. deal with celebrities. Um, are you a morning person or a night owl? I am a night owl. Okay, that was easy. I, um, I don't function well in the mornings. Um, what's the perfect first date spot? Oh, these are questions that you would ask on a date, right? Yeah. So if I was dating someone and they asked me what I want to do in do in life and i started talking about dolphins that wouldn't be good no i would avoid that okay noted all okay. right what was this question again <laughs> what is the perfect first date spot for me it would be disneyland oh okay or the beach oh okay like to go to the beach like for the day i think disneyland is such a great dating spot because there is a lot of downtime uh that you can use to engage in conversation and you get to know the person well based on the type of rides that they like, um, how they handle themselves in tight spots. If you go to a meal, you know, just check out what they order. And I don't know, there's just a lot that, yeah, you, can, can learn a that lot. you can do and experience in one day going to a place like that. Cool. Uh, the other one was the beach because I like the beach a lot. So if I was dating someone and they said, oh, no, I will not... I don't like the beach. I don't like the sand. I don't like the feel of the ocean water. Then there That's wouldn't be... That's a deal breaker for you? There wouldn't be a second date. Yeah. Oh, because wow. Because that would be uh, something that I would like to do regularly. Okay. And um, like you said, if you're looking for someone to marry, I, those would be the type of things that I would like to do as a married couple. Okay. That's definitely not a deal breaker for me. But if that is for you, that's cool. Yeah. I'm glad you found my, your wife. You well, I, I told you the other day, and this may be weird for our listeners, when mom and I started dating, I asked her to take her shoes off because I wanted to make sure that she had nice feet. It says a lot about your personal hygiene. I think that if a person takes care of their feet, it tells a lot about the rest of them. So I think we had known each other for a couple of days and I asked mom to take off her shoes. So and weird. I saw that she had nice feet and that she, she took care of her feet. And I'm like, okay. That's so weird. I know. That's weird. Yeah, that's really uncomfortable. Okay, two more. Um, these are actually like really deep, but really good. What's your greatest achievement? Uh, raising two kids that love God, that love family, and I don't know. That's it, I, I, I guess. Dang, that was deep. That was yeah, good. Just, just raising you guys because it was not easy. And... I know I didn't do it by myself. So part of that was learning how to have a good marriage and be good examples to you guys. Yeah. But seeing the type of woman you become, that's one of my greatest achievements. And with Ryan, especially with his disability and seeing how far he's come um, and just um, 
just seeing who you guys are now that brings me joy and that's the best thing i've done oh let's just leave it there that was good that was beautiful all right cool this has been our first dating podcast there will for do you think sure... we're gonna have another one? Oh, i'm definitely sure there will be another one okay i have so much more to talk about about dating it's ridiculous i'd love to talk about like sexual sin and dating like to do a whole podcast. On oh, just yeah. That. I have a lot of examples, like personal examples. Yes. Okay. Never mind. We're not doing one of those. <laughs> just kidding. So, ladies, just to recap know the why behind why you're dating someone, know exactly what you're going into this wanting, and dads, start acting like the man you want your daughter to marry. Boom. Mic drop. Peace. Until next time, have a good week. Thank you for listening to the Fathers and Daughters podcast, a Musket Entertainment production. For questions, comments, or topic ideas, email fdpodcast at yahoo.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new episodes.